Lecture 17, Plotting Poles on the Stereo Net In the previous lecture, we saw how to plot planes on the stereo net. However, tracing great circles is rather cumbersome, and as the number of planes increases, the stereo net gets cluttered. In this lecture, we will look at how to represent planes on the stereo net using not the planes themselves, but the poles to the planes. The pole to a plane is the downward normal to the plane. This figure shows nicely how to visualize the pole in three dimensions. Use your hand to represent the plane, and hold a pencil perpendicular to your hand to represent the pole to the plane. The pole to a plane is a line, and it will plot on the stereo net as a dot. The angle between the pole and the plane, measured along the dip direction, is 90 degrees. If the plane is vertical, the pole is horizontal. If the plane is horizontal, the pole is vertical. A steep plane has a pole close to the primitive, and a gentle plane has a pole close to the center of the stereo net. Let's look at how to plot a pole to a plane. Let's plot the pole to the plane with strike and dip north 40 east, 40 west. First, we mark the strike of the plane on the primitive. Then, we rotate the overlay to make the strike mark fall on a vertical straight line in the grid. Now, from the center of the stereo net and opposite to the dip direction, we count the amount of dip, in this case 40 degrees. We mark the point. This is the pole. We rotate the overlay back. The red dot is the pole to the plane. Poles are very useful to solve orientation problems related to planes and lines. In fact, we can solve the problem we solved last lecture, using poles. In this case, instead of using the limbs of the fold, to estimate the hinge of the fold, we can use the poles to the limbs, PW and PE. In addition, we can use these poles to estimate the angle between the limbs. We'll do this in class. That's it. To learn more about this, read chapter 6 of either Marshak and Mitra, or Reagan. And answer this question.